This is the 10 Minute Contrarian Podcast. This is VP. We are a solutions based podcast diving into the world of contrarian investing and alternative finance. We are hosted on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, nonsenseforex.com, and podcast players everywhere. Episode 14 is sponsored by IGUS. They are and have been my top recommended broker for United States citizens. At any time, if you are not a United States citizen, please check down below in the description or the show notes. I have my other recommended brokers there as well. But if you're in the United States, the choice is easy. 80 currency pairs, lowest spreads in the country, much better customer service than you're getting right now, and they are currently paying you to sign up. Go to my blog, read the specs, click the link at the bottom, sign up, and you will receive $250 back after you place your first trade. And if you are a big baller shot caller, you can be eligible for $5,000 cash back after you open 300 lots. There's a lot of cool options on this thing, and there are more coming. So get started now. It is the 10-Minute Contrarian Podcast, and let me kind of take a step back and remind everybody what I attempt to do here on this podcast. Um, I think if we're up to some people who are listening, this would be purely a cryptocurrencies podcast because that's what they are the most interested in. And there are some people who probably wish I didn't talk about crypto at all. Here's what I actually do, no matter what it is. I look for things that are cheap. Cheap and unloved at the time. Things that should not be as cheap as they are at the current prices, and then explain my case for why I think they will go up in the future. Now, I don't do this so much with defensive plays, like when we talked about stable coins or when I talked about gold ETFs. That's just defense. That's a good idea all the time. But we're talking offense today on the show, and it is officially time, in my opinion, to start really getting into gold and silver mining stocks. Now, if you like those same levels of asymmetry that you get when you buy on a heavy dip on cryptocurrencies, you should absolutely love these because, in my opinion, in some cases, if you get it right, the asymmetry is actually much higher, especially when you factor in downside to upside ratio. And it's a very interesting and unusual time right now in the gold and silver mining sector. For starters... In episode 13, there was a blog attached. I told you I had a little hidden surprise for you at the very end of that blog. And what it was, um, you don't have to go back and look at it if you don't want to, but I pointed out the price of gold five years ago, which was 1338 USD per troy ounce, compared to today, to where at the time I wrote the blog, it was right about 1810. It's a bit lower now, but I contrasted this with the price of the GDX, This is an index from Van Eck that tracks some of the largest gold miners on the planet. And the price for them, five years ago, was $26.41. Flash forward to today, or at least when I wrote the blog, which was about a week ago, it was only $32.26. Now, you might be saying, okay, VP, I get it, but percentage-wise, that's not really this incredible divergence you're talking about. Uh, You'd be correct, it's not. Uh, But there's one key thing you're forgetting. Gold miners are more or less a leveraged play on the price of gold. They should not be running close together like that. The GDX should be much higher than it is right now. I had it explained to me like this one time, and I'll share this with you because it's it's not a perfectly accurate way of describing it, but it's, it's pretty close. So let's say that you and I own a silver mine, and we break even right around $20 silver, all right? Are we going to operate a break-even mine at $20 silver? We might, but we might want to wait till it's more like 22 because at those prices, we can be profitable. You know, we can hire new people if we need to. We can buy new equipment if the old equipment breaks down. And we can give ourselves a decent salary. All because our profit margins went up at a nice rate by silver going from 20 to 22, Now, if price were to jump to, say, $24 an ounce, now it's getting good. Now we can pay dividends to shareholders. We can look into buying a new mine in the future, maybe reopening some mothballed mines we had in the past. I mean, this this is comfortable now, comfortable and profitable. And all it took was a $2 jump in the price of silver. The price didn't need to double to $44. 
it just had to go up by like two dollars and so every two dollar jump thereafter things get exponentially better so if the price of silver were to ever jump to something like fifty dollars an ounce i mean then we're all just sitting around doing cocaine all day and dancing to 80s music because there are no women around because we're in the middle of nowhere so there's really no good reason why gold miners should be tracking the overall price of gold as closely as they have been for the last five years. The gold mining industry is actually doing really well. The good mines with nice clean balance sheets are doing well. A lot of them were profitable back at $1,100, $1,200 gold. They just haven't had the outside investment pour in lately. It's been the opposite. When the price of gold and silver dropped recently, the prices of the miners dropped even harder. And it wasn't because they did anything wrong. It's not like an entire sector does something wrong. People were just looking to allocate that money elsewhere until it was finally time to jump back in. Well, there's a possibility that that time is either now or it's getting awfully close. And I'll tell you why. First off, there were a lot of very prestigious newsletter writers and experts in the industry that about four or five months ago were all getting very bearish on the overall price of gold and the mining sector. I thought, this was odd. I normally don't hear this type of bearish sentiment from these people. Let's see if they're right. Well, they nailed it. And now those exact same people are getting interviewed again on podcasts and on YouTube and now almost every single one of them has flipped bullish. So I like to see that. I like to see people who are way better than I am in this sector talking with an air of excitement. And there's a lot of reasons to be excited beyond this. The United States Infrastructure Bill still needs to pass in the House, if I recall, but if it does, and it's supposed to, this is going to be quite bullish for things like silver. On the gold side, Germany, one of the most deflationary countries in the history of countries, is experiencing inflation at levels that they are just not used to seeing. Many Germans have relatives and ancestors that were around during the Weimar Republic days, so they understand the importance of having things like gold around. And they're starting to see similar symptoms creep up. And in legacy finance, uh, there's a little company out there called Palantir. And by little, they are not little, they're gigantic. And this company has some of the biggest clients in the world. And by biggest clients in the world, I mean like the global elite, the masters of the universe, the lizard people. So safe to say that Palantir is going to have some inside information long before everybody else does. Now, what have they done with this information? Well, they just bought $50 million worth of gold bars. Not bonds, not Bitcoin, not cash. They traded in their cash for gold bars. So if anybody's going to see the writing on the wall before anybody else does, it's going to be them. But unfortunately, when you buy that much gold, you can't hide it. You have to report it. So now everybody knows. And then if you take it all the way down to peons like us, all we really have to do is look at our charts. Remember, we use the weekly chart for buy and hold. Now, there's really nothing for us to look at currently because everything's dropping. Um, gold is dropping a little bit. Silver's dropping a lot. Platinum, which we were looking at last week, is dropped even more. And all that is fine with me. It's not great for my existing positions. But for those of us interested in the sector and interested in buying other stocks in the future, this is great. Let it fall. The cheaper we get to come in and scoop it up, the better. Now, if you want to zoom out a little bit, you're going to notice something interesting, too. Um, to back up a little bit, I was interviewed by BlueFX, and all we did was talk about gold. Um, that interview is not out yet. Once it is, I'll put it on the website. Um, but we zoomed out to about 2018, and you could honestly go back to about 2016 if you wanted to. And you always hear the, the Bitcoin versus gold crowd, which is such a stupid, stupid argument. Have both. Be grateful we can invest in both. Um, but they'll say in the last 10 years, because they cherry picked the time, because that's when Bitcoin began, you know, gold has actually gone negative in price. Okay, fine. Uh, I really don't care what was going on with either of those two things back in 2013. I don't know about you. Um, but what's really interesting is if you go back to about 2016, uh, the S&P 500 was continuing to rage on. It just kept getting bullish, with the, the exception of a couple little dips here and there and the medium-sized one we had in 2020. It's done nothing but go up. Should be really bad for gold, right? Should be, but it wasn't. Now, because while the world was sleeping, the price of gold did nothing but get higher as well. It just happened nice and slowly. 
Now, why would it do something like that? Because the smart money, i.e. the opposite of what you normally see on Twitter, understood that these gains in the S&P 500 had now become phony and inflated. If they're real and they're organic, well then yes, you need to be buying S&P 500 and not buying gold. But if you understand that it's just a matter of time before it crashes and you don't know when that time is going to be, but you know it's going to happen, you better be loading up on gold. So many small to medium hedge funds and firms and financial advisors go out of business when major recessions happen. The ones who withstand the test of time, the big boys, or the ones who were small that became big because they did not make these mistakes, all knew when it was time to play defense, even if that means sacrificing a little bit of offense. And these same people have been doing this for the last four or five years. And all the while, the mining stocks, which should have experienced incredible gains during this time, for the most part, have not. This is the deep discount we are looking for. Now, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't do anything I say. But if I was going to give a recommendation, it would be this. Now, if our charts don't get it right the first time, that's okay. Take a two-tranche system, average down when you get the next signal. These are wonderful asymmetrical buy and hold plays. I'm already in for the most part. I'm all in on gold miners for sure. I probably have room for one more silver miner maybe, uh, but I'm disciplined. I only allocate an X amount of my portfolio to these things, uh, which is unfortunate because I'd love to buy more, uh, but I'm pretty much filled up with companies I like. Now, if your mining stock cupboard is empty and you would like to get started, I can help you out with that. Stay tuned for next week's episode, where I tell you probably one of the best resources out there to go from having almost no knowledge on gold and silver mining stocks to actually knowing quite a bit more than just about everybody else on the planet in like record time. And we will also be spending time diving further into the gold and silver mining sector here as well. So whether this is the start of the big push we've all been waiting for or whether it's not, doesn't matter. We will make sure you do not get left behind. In the contrarian investing world, a lot of these runs are long, sustained, and sometimes generational. And even though my brain right now just can't wrap itself around why we would have such a crazy run in gold and silver anytime like really soon, I have learned not to trust my stupid brain and to put trust in my charts. And my charts aren't saying anything yet, but the universe is starting to, and the experts agree, and the actions of insider companies and entire sovereign nations are also agreeing right now. And you know, maybe cryptocurrencies are still very cheap right now. I actually think they are, long term. But maybe those of you who spend 100% of your time on cryptocurrencies maybe want to take a little chunk of that time and come hang out with the mining sector. Because despite what your lords over there in the cryptoverse say about us, Maybe we're not so crazy after all. Maybe we're just early.